jump so fast. Oh, yep. oh that's that handy. Oh, 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 yeah. You know, when you're jigging, you're not covering as much water as we are now. You know, you got a big tackle box all full of lures. This is just like a tackle box, different techniques. Yep. That's the best tackle box you can have. Have a different ways to do things. I would agree. Sheep said. That's the sheep said, Phil. Sheep said. Oh, yeah, Larry, look at this. Look at this fish. Woohoo! Look at this fish. <laughs> look at this fish. Oh, it's a giant. It's a 30 incher. Hey, we're up in the Menominee River today and we're fishing with our good friend Brian Claremont. Hey, Brian, how's it going, man? Awesome. Glad to see you again, Larry. Hey, and also we've got, guess what? The one and only Phil the Dominic is back from the Mojave Desert. Phil the blind guy. Hey, Larry. <laughs> Phil, you're back. How was it? Boring. Boring. Lo losing lots of money. More gooder to be out fishing. There, I like to hear that. We got to put some positiveness back into the fill, and what a great way to do it by yep. doing some walleye fishing. Hey, Brian, tell everybody what we're actually out here doing today. Um, the bite has been really good and some big fish. And why are these fish still in the river? Water temperature. Um, the warmer water's in the river. We haven't had the sun pounding on the lake to warm it up yet, so they're sticking on the edge and in that warmer water. We've been getting some nice fish there. And a lot of currents. Lots of current yet, yeah, lots of current. So those fish are hanging around. We should have fun. We're going to start out pulling three ways this, this afternoon, and then we're going to go eat, and then we're going to jump in the shallows and do some flatlining. Oh, I love that. You know, Brian, have you ever seen the water this high this time of year? I've been here since the early 90s, and I've never seen it this high before. So. Yeah, it's just been an incredible year for water. Hey, you know what? Enough about how high the water is, how warm the water is. Let's go catch some fish. <laughs> This is what we got here. Um, I like using counter reels so I could tell how far we got the line back. It's nice when you get a big fish on because you can tell how far the fish is away and the big ones tend to stay down. So what we got here is a three-way swivel and I'm going to run a four ounce weight right here off my dropper. And does that change with the current? Yes, it, it depends on how fast the current's going. And I'll drop this swivel. There we go. And then we got a lead here. Larry's got all these uh, bait rig lures here. So yep, and I'll tell you, they have been hot. So let's. Uh, you're saying brighter colors yep. work better in this We're gonna, water versus uh, duller colors. Yes, sir. We're gonna put it to work today and see how they do. Well, it's a unique action that they have. The roll that that I love about them and the, the rattles inside. Yeah, they got rattles. Of course, I can't get it on there. Come on. There we go. And then I know these don't have no lure lipstick on them, so we got to get a little bit of scent. Yep, yep. It's bottom. Yep. Pull it forward as far as you can. And you just keep and repeating fo that. Yep. Follow it back, and as soon as it hits bottom, right there. Okay. Pull it. Yeah, forward I was again. doing more short. Yep. I, and it works that way too sometimes, but this is how I do the best. It's just like this. Right. Well, I'm not arguing with forward. The man that, that's known to be the the, the river back. rat of all river rats. Forward and back. Here you go. I gotta drive. Okay. I thought it was the River Billy Goat. Yeah, well, you're right about that. I forgot about that. The River Billy Goat. Anyways, he's a legend. You got one, buddy? Well, oh, got the first one. Clear mine off here. Yeah. Liking that. Billy. Billy Cheesesteak. He's back from Nevada. They have to be little before they get big, though. That's right. right? And they have to be 15 inches to keep yep. them. 15 inches, so this one goes back in. Good job, Phil. Here we go. This is a nice fish. Hey, hey. I'll tell you what, Ooh. Ryan. I started pumping it just like you were, and as soon as I did that, I got bit. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I'll tell you what, Ryan. This looks like you got a dandy on right now. Oh, and it smoked that new bait, Larry. I like them baits. You got to get me in with them guys. You got it. The old T-Bone series is pretty darn cool. Well, this fish T-Bone is T-Bone series bait. I'll yeah, say definitely that definitely T-Boned it. <laughs> Look at that. There's a nice walleye. Oh, yeah. Gina's got a T-Bone. Nice job, Nice there. job. Oh. See? Yep. T-Bone there. But if you're going to eat fish, this is a, a good eating size right here, too. It's about 18 inch. Perfect eating size. If the walleyes are lucky today, we're gonna let them all go. Sounds good to me. We got a double. I like that. Mine's bigger. Than well, it might be, but <laughs> mine feels bigger than the last one I caught, I can tell you that. What a cool way to fish, though. So, you know, we're pulling these three ways. 
And you ask why you're pulling three ways, because you can hold it to the bottom. You know, you can control where that bait is going. And then I'm just gonna flip mine, so it doesn't matter if it gets off anyways. But I'm telling you, you guys, this is a new bait, and it's very, it got a very unique wobble to it, how it wobbles. But you know, these fish, it's something different they haven't seen. And Brian, do you know what I just decided? I'm gonna keep a few of these fish, because that's absolutely perfect, like a 16-incher right there. And you know, I'm guiding all the time. We don't get a, we don't really get a chance to keep any fish. No, what we're doing too is basically, Brian showed me, is we're actually pumping the bait. So you're kind of like jigging that bait back and forth. And what that does is it gives it that erratic action to it, you know? Like it's, like Uncle Phil just said, like it's a wounded bait, you know? And, and of course the walleyes, like any other fish, they're an opportunist, you know? So they want an easy meal and they're thinking that bait is like you're saying, wounded and that's when they're just pounding it. I can't even turn the drag. Good, good, that's good, a good that's fish, a good one, guys. Man. Really that's a good, good one, fish. Man. I love this, this is a great way to fish. And you're covering so much water too, Brian. It's something different too. Yeah, you know, you get tired of doing the same thing, Jake. Oh, I just want to see this fish. Oh yeah, Larry, look at this. Look at this fish. Woohoo! look at this fish. <laughs> look at this fish. Oh, it's a giant. It's a 30 incher, it's a 30, oh. it's a 30. <laughs> Get him, Brian. Oh, I'm trying. Get him in the net. I got him. Oh. <laughs> nice fish, Larry. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Brian. Yes. Yeah. That is absolutely an awesome Look fish. at this fish. Well, again, what a great oh way to, to cover a lot of water. You're right in the zone where the fish are at. Everything's really tight the bottom. So I'm keeping that bait constantly That's your down fish, there. my friend. Fishing with the Claremont, you know, never lets us down. You betcha, brother. I love fishing with you, too. The same here. Yeah. Look at the color on that fish right there. Just absolutely beautiful. You know, and look at how fast this fish put that weight back on. That belly is absolutely just all filled back up, filled back out, almost like this yep. fish is full of They've been eating. Spawns. They've been they... spitting out all kinds of smelt, I think, is what they're spitting out. And boy, I'll tell you, we did a show a couple weeks ago on smelting and there is definitely a lot of smelt in the system of Lake Superior. But I've been hearing the same thing out here on Lake Michigan and the Bay of Green Bay. It's starting to come back. We ain't getting no runs in the creeks yet, but I got a feel the next couple of years it should start picking up better. That's awesome. Nice fish there. Nice Way fish. Okay, let's oh, let her go. There she goes. Nice job. Woo! Gotta love that. That's go. the funnest part about catching big fish is letting them go. Yes, sir. All right, sir. on to the next one, Uncle Phil. Okay. It jumps with the bass. Oh, yep. oh See, that's a dandy. Oh, 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 yeah. Tanks. Tanks, yeah, that's a nice fish. Yeah, nice job. Hey, Brian, why don't you explain a little bit more exactly what we're doing pulling these three ways? Because, you know, there's a lot of people, this is probably only about the third or fourth time I've ever done this, and there's a lot of people that watch our show that want to learn more about the proper way to pull three ways and why you really do it. You know, when you're jigging, you're not covering as much water as we are now. And like I said, how I like to do this is drop it back, and I feel bottom, I'll pull it up. I'll see I'm a little short, so I'll crank in a little bit of line. Okay. And I'll get it back, and the back of my stroke, pop, I've hit bottom. Then I want to pull it all the way up. So every time you're like, you're, 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 you're hitting bottom with your weight. Yes, and I, what I think, that, that when that weight hits the bottom, it gives a little puff of mud, and then you get a little click when you do that. Yeah, I think get... that helps to get the fish to strike. With the current that we got, we got to use a bunch of different si kind, you know, different size weights. Right now we're running four ounce sinkers because we got about three three dams open. If we had seven like we did last week, there we'd be running sixes to keep everything, you know, the way we want it. And I like that the weight. Another thing with the weight is too, if we got a lot of traffic out here, a lot of jiggers, we want to keep that bait close to the boat. So if you got people jigging behind you, you ain't got a hundred feet of line out, and you end up with a jigger catching your line or anything. 
and this is this is a fun way to fish it just is it's pretty simple it's a productive way to fish too right very productive um maybe not as many bites as you would like jigging but big fish this way um i because you're using a bigger profile bait yes right? and if we really wanted to, to, to get a real big one i would pull bigger baits we're using the new baits today so we're trying something a little bit different but hey they're working minnow. really good yep they're working really good psycho minnow yep i'm liking them i'm liking them but after eight hours of doing this you do have a sore arm <laughs> i'll say that it's much. good exercise yeah you don't have to go to the gym then you're getting right. your workout while you're working your bait two weeks ago when i was up here and i love to do a lot of vertical jigging or casting jigs and brian was here with a client pulling three ways with stick baits and he was pounding the fish and I made like six, seven passes right next to where he was fishing. I caught one, that was it. So there is times where you're gonna catch fish jigging and there's times when you're gonna catch fish trolling baits like we're doing here. For, so, for yep. sure, you gotta mix it up a little bit and, see, and let the fish tell you what they want. Right. But it, we all have our day. You know, I Well, spent... and like I'm saying, no, there's certain times where certain things work and, and that's the key. And to be, to be a good fisherman, you need to be versatile, versatile you know? so the yes. more things you can learn and conquer the better you're going to be as a fisherman and obviously the more successful you are you know the more you're going to enjoy the sport you know you got a big tackle box all full of lures this is just like a tackle box different techniques yep. that's the best tackle box you can have have a different ways to do things i would agree Hey, I'll tell you what, Brian, we are going to wrap it up here and go in and we're going to cook up some food because it's that time. And uh, we're going to go out and do some night fishing tonight. We're going to be doing something a little bit different. So you guys want to definitely stay tuned and see uh, what we're going to be doing next. But I'm starving, man. We eat fishy. You haven't, we... you haven't stopped it since we've been out here. What are you talking here? about? <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's all you've been doing. Hey. We ate all the beaver sauce. I'm all growing. Right. I got a long ways to go. <laughs> I'm just watching you eat. You're full watching me. Oh, listen to me. <laughs> You're killing me. Hey, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats the finest jerky on the planet. You know, Brian, I always love your fish fries when we come up to fish with you. It's one thing I really look forward to. And before I was coming into the shop here and I saw you were doing something with the oil and I thought to myself, what a great tip of the week. Okay, it's really important when you cook a fish fry, the next time you cook it, you wanna filter all the crumbs out of it. So what I got is a funnel here and a little piece of paint strainer on it with a rubber band around it. What I do is I filter my oil after every fish fry. And what I do is I just dump it on in here like this. And that's just filtering all that burnt stuff on it. All, all the crumbs. And it may not be burnt now, but as soon as I, I put that up to 360 again, all them crumbs will burn. And it'll make your oil really dark. And then your fish tastes burnt. Yep, and oil's expensive. Very expensive. Especially because you're using peanut oil? Peanut oil, and it's peanut oil and sunflower oil. But you know, to keep that oil going, when I filter it out like that, what I do is I just add a little bit of fresh stuff to it now when I cook again, and it, it pretty much runs right around. If it gets real dark, I'll, I'll dump it. Okay. But if you can keep it looking pretty clear, clean, that's what you want. Now you see when I pour this out now, you'll see it's Boy, all it nice again. New. And then if you look at the bottom of the funnel here, see all the crumbs are stuck in there? Yep. You burn that when you try to cook fish again. You're gonna get that bad taste? Yep, you'll get that burnt taste. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, for that great tip of the week, you definitely deserve the Mike's Country Meats. And we always want to awesome. thank our good friends up there at Mike's Country Meats for such a fine product. Best jerky on the earth. Planet. 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 Earth. Planet. <laughs>
boy. Trees. Monsanto, the manufacturer of Roundup, may have known that Roundup and other weed killers were likely linked to organ damage and cancer. This information was hidden from the public as proprietary trade secrets since 1981, and Monsanto may have failed to warn of the... Hey, welcome back, everybody. I'll tell you, last night was a very tough night fishing. We fished probably till about 2 in the morning and uh, never even had a bite, so we're back out here this morning. Gonna go right back at it and start pulling three ways like we did yesterday afternoon when we got up here. That bite was decent, but we, when we went back in for dinner, came back out for the night bite, it just wasn't happening. So let's go make it happen. It's a walleye. Nice job, Phil Dominic. Barely hooked. Nice walleye. Woo. Nice job. Good job, Phil. Gotta like that. Nice job, Phil. Mwah. Yep. Nice okay. job, Phil. You're on fire. That's a good fish, Phil. Yep. Yep. Go right down to the water. Right, oh, right, right in the water. Oh, it's a giant. Oh, oh look at it this. Is. Look at this. Keep pulling. Keep going. Keep, keep cranking. That is a big when fish. When I tell you to pull, I think his drag's a little loose. Keep cranking. He's barely hooked. Keep cranking. Oh, get him. 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 Pull, Phil. Come on. Pull forward. Pull forward. I got him. Woo! Oh, nice, nice fish. fish. Nice yeah. fish, Phil. Yeah. Nice fish. Get the sheep in there. Yeah, it, yeah it, it's a sheep's head. It's a sheep's head, Phil. It's a sheep's head. We just, the first one of the year, we'd like to get a little bit of footage of it. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Nice good job. job, good job. You, this is your morning for sure, buddy. Nice to see. We're gonna make a three-way troller out of you yet. <sighs> it's another one for his scoreboard. He is on fire, yeah, you guys. I'm switching to my bait. Okay, stop reeling, pull. That's a keeper. You know, Phil, you are on fire on that fire tiger. I'm gonna switch to the T-Bone Minnow Series and uh, see if I can compete with you. Nice job, Brian. I'll tell you, you know, there's no doubt that this is the technique. Hand lander. Little tiny guy, out of the way. You know, I just changed that over to the fire tiger, oh, it's a good fish, to the fire tiger. T-bone minnow itself. No, you can keep just keep going. Just to give a little no. different action. Slipping all there. Ooh, nice fish. Nice fish. Whoa! Tag fish too. That's a, that is a giant. That one's got tag a tag fish. on yep. it too, tag Brian. Fish. Yep. Wow. Oh, that's one of those tags worth a hundred bucks. Woo! <laughs> hundred dollars. Hundred bucks. Hundred Woo! bucks. I got a hundred dollar tag today. Hundred dollar tag. Wow. That's awesome. Now, I'll tell you what, now everybody, you guys need to know if you catch a walleye and it's got a tag that looks like that, this has actually got a tracking device in it and what they, we're going to obviously let the fish go, but this is a $100 tag on here, so you want to make sure you pull the tag off of it and give it back to the DNR and you'll get the 100 bucks. Love that. Not every day you catch a $100 walleye. Love it. And I caught that on what? The T-Bone Minnow, which is before I was running the, the Psycho Minnow, and I switched it a little bit because the T-Bone Minnow itself has got a little bit different action to it, and I'll show you that in a couple minutes. But yeah, let's take that tag off of her. Let's get her back in. You can see right there where the tag was. So that'll heal right back up. Out of here. Woo! Good job. Good Gotta job. love that. Hundred bucks. Hey Phil. Oh, yeah? Phil, you missed half your candy bar. You got it all over the place. <laughs> Look at this jacket. Hey, when there's a mess, I got a way to clean it up. The simplest way, the most effective way to clean anything: tub or towels. You want to take care of them for me? Cut it off. Please clean me up, or my wife will yell at me. My jacket's dirty. Pretty good. I got chocolate all over my beard. Look at that, cleans it right out. Double towels. Oh. Bam. Now we're into the eaters, my friend. Yes, sir. You said you wanted some fish take home, I so did. you're gonna get some. Gotta love that. Let's pull, Phil. Nice fish, Phil. Ooh, that is a nice fish. Hey, Brian, I got something for you. 
I'm going to give you some of this new Power Strike line that we've been using. At least it's new to us. Been using it for probably the last, oh, probably six to nine months. It's been great. Here's the high vis. And the next time we come up here, I want to see it on all your reels, buddy. Oh, you betcha. There you go. I like the yellow stuff, Larry, because you can see it. I do a lot of night fishing. Yep. And, it, and you know, dirty water, it's nice to be able to see your line. So I will use that. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. And I love that Super Braid because, you know, it's a lot more sensitive. And especially when you're fishing in this heavy current like this, it cuts it a lot better. You don't have to have as much line out as you would with mono. And I think that you hook up better. Well, when you're pulling the bait too, you get a lot better reaction when you're pulling it. You That's get a lot, lot better action off your bait. No a lot stress. tighter. Yep. That's the big bolt. Hey, I'll tell you what, Mr. Claremont, awesome time again. Phil, it's great to Hello. see you back from the Mojave Desert. Job, yeah. Yep, and you definitely had the hot hand today. There's no doubt about that. You know, again, what an interesting way to fish, pulling three ways with stick baits. And today, of course, we're using mostly the new T-Bone series by Bait Rigs. Great baits, great action, Absolutely. great company. You know, Brian, if people want to get a hold of you and come out and enjoy some great fishing, I mean, you know, you, you'll be fishing all summer long you betcha. on all these different parts of the Menominee and out on the Bay of Green Bay. How can they do it? You can give me a call, 715-735-7346, or uh, look me up on Facebook, BAC Guide Service absolutely awesome you know what this week we want to make sure we thank all of the hard-working men and women over at Evernrude engines there in Sturdivant for building such a great product to keeping us going here on the water and remember like I always say it's a great day to be alive an opportunity how do you say that Oppert opportunist opportunist it's a tongue 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 twister it's probably from all them root beer barrels. Yeah. Yep. Look at that tushy wiggle. This is the walleye dance. 